just attack it, go after it, and uh, yeah, I, I think I was the only coach that competed tonight, so that was, that was pretty cool, you know what I mean? And that's not a shot on the, any of the other guys, uh, but you know, I, I don't mind putting myself out there and having fun. Came up short tonight, but it, man, I had a blast. Obviously, anytime I can uh, do stuff with, with five passes, it's, it's great. Yeah, is it uh, daunting when you go out there and see the big guy? I mean, or I'm sure you're used to coming up, like grappling so, your guys. I don't or... know if you guys remember the last one, but the last time I ran into Ricardo Evangelista, he's <laughs> the same, he's pretty much the same guy. He's, yeah. he's the, he's huge, he's 250, 260, and then I run into this dude. I just, I need. Maybe I just need to get an individual match or something next time. I, I gravitate towards these six foot, twelve freaking monster behemoth men. So I would, uh, I would, I would really like to compete against somebody my own size for once. But that'd be good. Does this give you the itch for any other type of competition, or are you kind of good with where you're at? Uh, for now, I'm good from uh, good with where I'm at. I mean, I, I, I do enjoy competing, but as I've said before, the the, the fighting aspect of things has to come to an end at some point. I'm so grateful for for the UFC to put on because it allows me to continue to compete and uh, I guess scratch that that itch, compete with you know, get in there with my friends, mix it up, I still learn, get better, all that stuff. You know, there's a, a ton of talent today, and uh, I'll be honest with the jiu-jitsu, with MMA, like if you're good, I know who you are. Local, regional, worldwide, I know who you are. Here, there's guys I never heard of that are just absolute savages, and it's not just here, but all in jiu-jitsu. It's just a different world. And it's growing so fast that I don't think the, the community can keep up with the talent, you know. So you can get a bunch of guys that nobody knows who they are and they're just monsters. So uh, I just enjoy competing. I enjoy putting myself out there, getting better. And that's what this is all about for me. You, you say it has to come to an end at some point. Yeah. Like, do you want that moment like you saw like Cowboy and Jessica I have <laughs> last night? Or if like you never get something scheduled again, are you completely okay now? Or do you want to be The answer is both. Yeah. The answer is both. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to tell you guys I'm retired because I feel like if the with, if the right circumstance or you know uh, situation was presented in front of me, I would I would entertain it for sure. Uh, there's a there is a part of me that that wants to tell you guys you know I'm 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 done, and I'm good because I wanted I wanted three things out of this whenever I was all done and that was uh, I wanted to go out on a win I wanted to be financially free, and I wanted to go out on my own terms not like the UFC nudging me like hey you lost three in a row you got to get out of here, never wanted that so right now. I'm good, I have all those things. And uh, I feel like if I fight again, I put that at risk. However, the closure of being able to, you know, do what Cowboy did, put your gloves down, I just don't want to do it off of a loss, you know what I mean? So, man, if I never fight again, I'm 100% good. Like, I, I enjoy it. And, and I think I have I have a, something that 99% of the other UFC guys that retire don't have. I get to fulfill these other guys, their dreams be a part of their journey, and, and uh, I'm still in it. You know what I mean? I'm in it more now than than uh, than I was when I was actually actively competing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 tough. It's a bit mixed bag of emotions on what I want to do, where I want to go, and stuff like that. But this does all come to an end at some point. I'm 36 years old. Uh, I've had, you know, somewhere between 70 and 80 fights, pro and amateur. It's just I don't. Like when is a good time, and I don't think anybody can ever answer that, and that's the hard part, you know. And I don't think I think I'll be 50, and I'll still be having that itch, you know what I mean? I don't think it ever goes away. If you're a competitor, you're a competitor for life. So uh, it's just my desire to do the eight-week camps, and it's just not there anymore. And I don't want to disrespect the game. I'm not going to disrespect the game. I'm not going to disrespect these young kids and the sport, my team, the the, the other fighters on the roster, by putting out a, a bullshit product of what I'm capable of. I just won't do it. Last thing for me, uh, you talk about making that walk every weekend. Yeah. Uh, lots of stuff coming up, but the next pay per view is yeah. a big one. You'll be making that yep. walk for an interim title fight. That's right. Um, just tell me what your expectations are out of Brandon in his first, first fight with your team. Yeah, so so we've really worked hard on, on fixing some just uh, minor things uh, with, with Brandon that I feel like has gotten in, in trouble in the past. And uh, you know, I, I expect to see, to see a very new and improved Brandon Moreno. I mean, I really do. Obviously, listen. I'm, uh, I don't really even put a lot of stock into their first fight. Kai's gotten so much better since they fought. Uh, obviously, he's coming off a huge win over Askar. And uh, we gotta, we got to take him serious. I'm taking him very serious. Um, I'm 0-2 in title fights so far. One of my life goals is to, is to I've never said you cannot go back and find an interview with me saying I wanted to, I wanted to be a, a world champion. But you can find an interview with me saying that I want to coach a world champion. So I'll get my shot, you know, uh, July 30th, and uh, I, I, I like odds. How grateful are you that there is that plan? To just to circle back to the potential, you know, putting the gloves on the canvas that you do have coaching, that you have your other Yeah, members. yeah. It's, you know, it's it's funny because everybody's always said I've always I've gotten this a lot coming up in the in the game, and there's uh, 
You know, you can't have a plan B. You can't. For me, this has always been a part of plan A. So this has never been a deviation from plan A. It's just been um, the only thing I can say is it happened a little sooner than I thought it would. You know? So uh, I've always wanted to coach. I've been coaching guys for a long time. Just now I'm getting more recognition for it. You know. Uh, but yeah, I, I, it's always been part of my plan A. It's always been something I wanted to transition to. And I feel like it's it's an easy transition from fighter to, to coach. And it kind of happened quick, you know. Uh, so I'm very grateful for the opportunity though, to answer your question. It's, I mean, I'm grateful just to be here. Like I said, I, I feel like some of these guys, some of the guys retire and they just, they're kind of lost. They don't know what to do. I don't have that. And I'm here, I'm still here right now. I'm in the Apex now, you know, I was in T-Mobile yesterday. Next week I'll be right back here watching corner two people on the car. You know, I, I still get the I still get the fulfillment out of it. So uh, a lot of the guys don't get that. I'm very grateful and fortunate to be able to still get that uh, get that that, uh, that nice feeling coming in here and being part of it. That's great. You're relevant as a coach. Even as a fighter, there's someone who still says your name, so that has to be in your step that you're. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's a. Uh, I can still compete. I just I don't. And once again, this all comes to an end at some point, you know. And I don't think there's ever going to be a time where it's like, now's a good time. Maybe now it is the time, but is it the is it the best time? You know. And I don't. Th I think it's impossible to answer that as a fighter. You know what I mean? Like with, with Cerrone, I feel like he's by, you know kind of been one foot in, one foot out. Was that the best time? I don't think so. But it was it was the time. You know what I mean? I, and he could have he could have quit. A few fights ago, and I, th I don't think anybody would have said anything. He could have done 50, and I don't think anybody would have said anything. But it was his. It was his time. He felt it was. It was needed to, to go then. And um, I just, man, I just don't want to disrespect the game. I, I, I love the sport too much to go out and put some bullshit product of myself out. You know, I know what I'm capable of, and I know how good I can be. And I just, I, I'm not what I once was. I don't recover like I once did. Uh, and and unless. Well, you guys know, if you guys know me at all, you know I'm about business, I'm about money too. So money, the right the right amount of money can talk me into it too. So we'll see, you know, we'll see. With this competition being the limit of 750 per team, yeah. do you think that you'll take that into consideration as far as your tactic and bring in your own talent? Man, it's it's just so hard. You know, I mean, you never know. You never know what's going to – I mean, did you watch the – even the small guys were good. Like, it, I don't think the weight is – I mean, it is. It is a thing. It is a thing. But I don't know if you can, if you can play it right. You know what I mean? Because uh, we had a big guy. We had Kyle. You know what I mean? He just didn't make it. I, I feel like if Kyle would have made it past the first guy, I don't feel like we would. I don't feel like he would have gotten subbed. Right? So I think that would have been completely different if Kyle would have subbed the first guy. You know what I mean? And that's. But he, once again, he went against one of the smaller guys who was an animal. And it's just like there's so much talent there. I don't know if it's a size thing because some of the best guys out here tonight were smaller. You know? So. Everybody's so just saying it's just good. about bringing the best guys. Yeah, Man, you got to bring the best. This was, I didn't know half the people on this thing, and I was blown away by how good some of these guys were. I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, some of these guys are amazing. And I'm just like, I don't do jujitsu. I do jujitsu, but I do it for MMA. It's different. It's 100% different. It's like ping pong and tennis. It looks the same, but it's not. The setups are different. The, the, the range is different. Uh, the speed is different. Like, I don't, I can't tell you guys the last time that I practiced uh, passing a closed guard. Why would I need to? I just hit you. It doesn't even make sense. I can't tell you guys, like, I just, if I get the top half guard in MMA, I'm good. Like, that's where I want to be. I'm just going to hit you from there. But I got sweat from top half guard tonight because you can't do that. And the guy was massive. But, you know what I mean? Like, it's, the rules are different, you know? And uh, it's, 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 uh, it is a game. It's a sport. There are two separate things. MMA jiu-jitsu and sport jiu-jitsu are very, very different. Okay, and one last question about the um, possible time yes. or whatever it comes. Um, do you think you'll need a moment then, or could it just possibly be something where time just goes by, you keep uh, coaching, and yeah. it just becomes something it'll, that just happens? One day it'll just be a thing where it'll just be too long, too long gone, and I'll just be like, all right, man, like, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, that's, that's the struggle, you know, that's the struggle is like, because I don't really have a reason to come back. You know, but I also don't want to give it up either. You know what I mean? And that's people not in my position, they struggle with that because some of these guys haven't set themselves up financially or whatever, so they have to come back. And it's just like, I don't have to come back. I don't need to come back. And there's most of the time I don't want to come back, you know? And uh, I just, I feel like it's, uh, it's, but it's, in my opinion, it is the toughest sport in the world to, to, to be done with because it's the highest highs and it's the lowest of the lows. And it's so 
cliche to say, but it's the truth. Right? This isn't a game. This is the most primitive form of, it's the longest sport on the planet. It's the most, as a male, it is, is the primitive end of the road. Like, I'm, I have more money than you, I'm faster than you, I'm stronger than you, I'll beat you up as the end of the line and all that. And it's embarrassing to go out and, and lose and in front of all your people, but it's amazing to go out and win. So there's a part of, I think, every fighter that doesn't want to give that, that ability, that chance, that opportunity to say, hey, I can go out here and win this because it's so rare. Like, you're the one, if you've made it to this level, you're the 1% of the 1%, you know? So just to get here, I'm so grateful just to be, I'm not supposed to be here right now. I, I was born in the trailer park. Okay, that, trailer that's park. question for me. Do you have an ideal match that would be for you, like a just, location, a fighter, style? 